Josh Hazelwood. Oh. He's caught it. Oh. Gone. Mid Australia could not have wished for anything more this morning. On the 19th of January 2021, boisterous keeper Rishabh Pan hits carrying quick Josh Hazelwood down the ground for one of the most important boundaries in Test cricket's history. Those runs took India to back-to-back -to -back series wins in Australia, while simultaneously handing the Aussies their first defeat at the Gabba for 32 years. It was the symbolic end of a dramatic series which will long be remembered as one of the greatest in the history of Test match cricket, played between two sides who have begun a fierce and at times fiery rivalry. India outplayed a full-strength Australian side with a number of key players missing, making this one of the great upsets in cricket history. A lot of the strategy used to defeat Australia in this series was previously unearthed in the 2018-19 series, where India created a set of plans and tactics that were so specific and intricate that they managed to outsmart Australia over the course of the series. These plans were created in a way that they would counter and outpoint all of the key strengths that Australia carried into the series. The first key to winning in Australia was to score big runs. Easy on paper, but when facing up to arguably the best bowling attack in the world, the task becomes harder. As a result, India used the same key principles that were utilised in the prior series to batter the Aussie bowlers. The first order of business was the Aussie quicks. The trio of Stark, Hazelwood and Cummins had to have as low an impact as possible if India were to win the series. In 2018-19, the team perfected the tactic of grinding the Aussie bowlers into the ground in order to score big runs. In Melbourne and Sydney in particular, India didn't score their runs quickly, but they did keep the fast bowlers in the field for most of the first two days of each test. This was also present in the 2021 series, as in the first innings of each test, the Aussie bowlers were forced to toil for over 90 overs. This led to fatigue and had an effect on the bowlers' stamina by the end of the series, with all the quicks out on their feet. But why was India not bowled out sooner? Surely a bowling attack of this calibre could find ways to get wickets. India essentially made a commitment to not falling across their stumps, meaning that LBWs were extremely hard to come by. In 2018, Australia got zero LBWs across all four tests against India. Compare that to other series in recent memory and you can see why India were having so much success against the Aussie Quicks. A whole mode of dismissal was nullified completely, something that was usually very difficult to achieve. India identified that the current Australian bowlers all rely on sharp bounce and lateral movement to take wickets, most often getting nicks to the slips. For example, the second innings in Adelaide was almost entirely catches behind for Tim Payne. India knew that Australia's reliance on this mode of dismissal was a big weakness and ensured that if they could minimise the other modes of dismissals, namely LBW from the full ball, they would have much more success as Australia would have to go searching for miracle balls. And if you look at most of the dismissals across both series, it was more often than not that the Aussie bowlers were finding magical deliveries to get wickets, rather than India playing bad shots. And this goes back to India's management of the LBW former dismissal. In the 2021 series, the Aussies got four LBWs only. They adjusted slightly compared to 2018-19, but not enough to make LBW a real threat to the Indian batters. India's tactics to Nathan Lyon were also a key reason to victory. The Indian planning identified that Lyon was a player who always performed against India, and usually when the Aussie team wins, Lyon plays a large role to some degree. His stats in previous series reveal him to be a major cog in quality Australian performances. His ability to hold down an end is essential to the balance of the Aussie attack as it would allow Tim Payne to rotate his quicks, meaning they can have longer periods of rest. India countered this by playing Nathan Lyon in a highly intelligent manner. Lyon is the type of bowler who builds pressure on stationary batsmen. His change-ups revolve around angles, bounce and speed, as opposed to slide tricks that are used by bowlers such as Ravi Ashwin. Lyon keeps the ball essentially in the same area and bangs on one eventually biting on the pitch and popping up to a catch in close. To counter this, the Indian batsman manoeuvred around the crease brilliantly to make sure Lyon couldn't settle. For example, Pajara would stay back in the crease sometimes, then would dance forward and work to the onside, and then also simply pad the ball away. This meant Lyon was tempted the ball straighter and much more defensively, making himself way less of a threat to right-handers. 
In addition, with Batsman moving around so much, Lyon was unable to pin his opponent's yarn and apply pressure. Gary would finish the series with just 9 wickets, at the time leaving him stranded on 399 test wickets. Managing Nathan Lyon was just one of the ways India masterfully won the fourth innings of the matches. In both their second innings at the SCG and the Gabba, India were given no chance of holding on for the draw, let alone playing for the win. The pitches were predicted to deteriorate heavily on the final day, and the Australian attack was predicted to simply be too strong to not create 10 wicket chances. One man, however, was the difference between the two sides in that regard. It's ridiculous to think that, at the beginning of the series in Adelaide, Rishabh Pant wasn't even picked. Despite statistically being the worst keeper from his debut to 2020 due to his rate of dropped catches, he brings a certain X-factor and energy to the side that is sorely missed when he is not there. And while his knock to win the Gabba test was superb, and is going to be highly disrespectful of me to gloss over it, I believe his 97 of 118 balls in Sydney was more vital than the Brisbane innings as it changed the course of the entire series. Up until that point, Australia had been bossing the Sydney test, and it had appeared that 2-1 was destined to happen going to Brisbane. However, Rishab had other ideas. Promoted up the order by his captain, the way Pant danced down the crease to line in particular and smoked him over long on time and time again with a fielder in place there was unbelievable. And by playing so aggressively, it forced Tim Payne to change his tactics. With Pant and Bajara creeping ever so slightly to the 407 needed to win, Payne was forced to take in a more defensive approach or he would risk losing the series outright. Pant was at the crease for 43 overs, and for the most part of those, Payne had defensive fields in place to try and prevent him from scoring runs. That means that for just under half the day, the Aussies were setting fields that were not as likely to get wickets. Tim Payne was one of the best and most underrated captains in world cricket at the time, and even he was lost on how to attack the situation. Do you keep attacking and risk losing the test, or dig in with defensive fields and take the game deep? He chose option B and failed to call Rahane's bluff, meaning Australia lost a lot of overs to get wickets. The major talking point from the first two games was the batting woes of Australia. The team after two tests had a top score of 200 for the series, only saved in Adelaide by the tremendous effort of the bowling attack in the second innings. The excuse that most Aussie fans, including myself, rolled out in 2018-19 was that Australia only batted poorly because of no Smith and Warner. And while Warner was out of the first two tests of the 2021 series, Steve Smith, the number one batsman in the world at the time, was there for all four test matches. The way India grinded the Aussie batsmen down was to bowl straight at them and dry up any free runs on offer, depriving them of their scoring shots. The bowler's discipline had to be meticulous and not allowing the Australians any width was key. This tactic stemmed from the 2018-19 series as well. It evolved from India's bowling plans to target Usman Khawaja in that series. At the time, Usman Khawaja was the best batsman in the Australian team and was coming off the back of a fantastic series in the UAE where he made a match-saving knock in the first test of the series. The plan for Khawaja was to starve him of his key release shots and attempt to make him play in a way that suited the Indian bowlers. These release shots were Khawaja's pull and cut shots, and upon revisiting the 2018 series highlights, you will find it hard to find Khawaja playing many of these strokes which are usually his favourites. The Indians gave him nothing and bowled stump to stump, making the lefty play in a defensive way before throwing him a wider delivery that wasn't quite there to hit and nicking him off. The plan worked beautifully and with Usman not making runs, the rest of the weakened order collapsed around him. The Indians adopt this strategy in the current series but enhanced it and specialised it for each batter. The bowlers bowled straight and at the stumps with leg side fields, refusing to let the Aussies have easy cuts and drives and forcing them to play the slow game. Australia's average run rate across the first two tests sat at just 2.91, the lowest for 50 years. Compare that to the Ashes of 2019 for example, in which they had an average of 3.53 and the Australian batting headed by Smith and Marnus dominated their English counterparts. Both the tactics for batting and bowling relied on getting into the grind, keeping the matches close, and seeing who would crack under pressure first. More often than not, the Australians were the ones to crack with ball and bat. This is part of the reason that, despite the injury toll, India were able to continue to compete. It didn't matter who was in the team, so long as they stayed in line with the plans. Losing key bowlers such as Bumrah and Shami mattered less as players like Siraj, Takur, and Natarajan could all come in knowing what plans to follow, and could simply be cogs in the machine. The captaincy and leadership of Rahane was a key reason for this. He understood his young players and knew that if he could keep the fight to the Aussies, they could turn the series into a grind and could get the job done. A good comparison to this is the Cronulla Sharks in their 
NRL Premiership season. Cronulla were not a flashy team with stars like Cameron Smith, Billy Slater or Jonathan Thurston, but they were able to grind teams in the low scoring contests and make them work hard for their points. This meant that despite the fact that the Sharks didn't have any superstars, they could still turn the match into a scrap and could come out on top. If you look at the scores for the series, you begin to understand that India did a similar thing. In the series, neither Australia or India went past 400 runs in any test. Even when Australia went close to scoring in the final two tests, scoring 3-3-8 and 3-6-9, they never really got out of touching distance for India, giving them a chance to fight back into the contest. India got well beaten in Adelaide, struck back in Melbourne, clung on for dear life in Sydney, and took the Gabba deep enough so that they could win the match and the series. And although it was a great series win for India, I wouldn't say they completely outplayed Australia. Besides the Melbourne test, both sides had chance of winning each test. If India held their chances in the first innings of the Adelaide test, Australia could have made an even lower total. In Sydney, Australia were in complete control until the tumultuous final day. At the Gabba, they were in the ascendancy until the Sundar Takur partnership. However, although Australia won so many battles in the series, India won the war. In boxing terms, Australia spent the whole series looking for a knockout blow, which never came, while India, through clever tactics and pressure, outpointed Australia at every corner besides round one in Adelaide. Overall, the series was an all-time classic that revitalised and shredded a number of old standing cricket records and streaks. Overall, it wasn't the end of the world for Australia. The series saw them debut talents such as Will Bukowski and Cameron Green, with the latter establishing his place in the test team. Since then, Australia have been so-and-so, winning the Ashes against England before embarking on a mixed bag of tests in the subcontinent. India, on the other hand, have become the dominant force in test match cricket, and despite a few hiccups in South Africa and most recently in England, they are still trending upwards with their young and fearless team, whose roots will long be traced back to that sunny Brisbane afternoon at the Gabba.